Hi everyone, this is Nick, and I'm going to be taking you through the initial setup of a new Gaja Classic Pro. Now, you might notice there is a tasty looking shot of espresso, and I just couldn't help myself and had to pull one for you before this video got started. But I'll be going over what you'll need to do to get your machine set up out of the box so you can start brewing. That's going to cover things like the accessories included in the machine, which I'll later demo for you, and water filtration options, as there are quite a few that we might recommend for the Gaja Classic Pro. So let's take a look at setting this machine up, starting with its accessories. Out of the box, the Classic Pro actually comes with its own mini box, which is full of accessories. So. Starting from left to right, we have our tamper. This is a very basic plastic tamper. We strongly recommend that you either replace it right away or purchase a 58 millimeter tamper along with the machine. It will serve you very well in preparing your espresso. Now, these metal little cups here, these are called portafilter baskets. And so you lock these into your portafilter, which is where your coffee is brewed, and then fill them with ground coffee. Now, these first two, these are what are called commercial style baskets. So they have a lot of small perforated holes that coffee flows through. These two, the commercial style, are ideally used in conjunction with a coffee grinder. So getting something that can produce a grind suitable for espresso will give you the appropriate coffee to use in these baskets. Now, if you can't afford a grinder or are looking to save on your budget maybe, that's where you would use this. This is called a pressurized filter basket. The key difference here, there's only a single hole that the coffee can flow through, and that slows down the flow of water to help extract where you have otherwise kind of lower quality coffee. You need to use that in conjunction with something called a two-way pin. This fits inside your portafilter and helps keep the coffee from splashing. Now, I keep saying portafilter, and that's this right here. It's the handle and filter head assembly. It's basically a large piece of metal that stays really hot and gets pressurized while your water is flowing. That's how espresso gets extracted. Also included is this scoop. So I would recommend there are a lot of good ways that you can measure out coffee to brew with that don't involve this scoop. So I'm going to set that to the side and that's pretty much all I'll say about it. Now, our last bit here is the drip tray cover. So this has a film on it right here. This is called laser film. It peels right off. So if your tray is white, peel that off. It's beautiful stainless underneath. But other than that, those are the accessories that come in the box with the Classic Pro. Out of the box, one of the first things you'll need to do with your Classic Pro is get the water reservoir rinsed, and if you are going to put a water filter in it, that would be the time to do so as well. Now, getting the water reservoir out for the very first time takes a bit of doing, and you'll just need to get used to a couple of the nuances, but once you've removed and rinsed the reservoir and returned it to the machine, you can start filling it from the top which saves you from having to repeat this process. But let's just make sure our steam wand is angled out. And then this tube right here, this is something called the decompression duct. So when you're done brewing your shots, water gets dispensed through here down into the drip tray. So it's important that we get this removed. And then I'll show you a little trick here. But on the drip tray screen itself, in the top uh, right, or sorry, left corner here, uh, there is a little hole that the duct lines up with, so when you put it back into the machine, you want to make sure that that hole is here in the top left. And you can see the little circle there that kind of lets you know. But this whole assembly for the drip tray comes out. Now, this is our reservoir, and there are two tubes that are in here, and you can see them there on the right. And as we pull this out, you can see them. The longer tube, this is our water intake. This shorter tube, that's our return line. When we put this reservoir back in the machine, and I'll just kind of show you, it helps to sort of tuck them like that and then slide the reservoir back in. So that's a little trickier with water, but I can, you know, show you that as well. But basically, remove the reservoir, we'll get it rinsed, and then we'll return it to the machine. And with our water reservoir rinsed and I've partially filled it, we can go ahead and get this inserted back into the machine. Now, again, as I showed you, you want to get these tubes kind of tucked up here. Simply go on ahead 
and gently press things back and you just check to make sure everything's in there okay so we're good so now what we'll do is we'll take the decompression duct you can have the longer end of the metal facing down the shorter end actually will go right up here but there's a little socket and we can just push that right up in there go on ahead and then slide the drip tray back in place now i didn't fill the reservoir all the way and there is a max fill line that lets you know how much water to put in here so i'll show you now how to fill from the top this lid simply comes off and will go ahead and pour water in. So there's a slope here and then the actual, uh, you know, shoot for the water. There's a cone, if you ever open up the machine, that you can see that points down into the reservoir. Now, you want to make sure that you don't pour too fast because if you do, sometimes the water can spill up top here if you're pouring too aggressively. So I'll just go ahead and pour a little bit of water in there. And you can see it's pouring down straight into the reservoir. And once you've got that in place, you can continue to simply fill from the top as you need to. And that's it though, as far as getting your water reservoir set up on the Classic. Before we go ahead and prime our machine and get brewing, I wanted to touch base on the topic of water quality for a moment. So the Gaja Classic is a semi-automatic espresso machine. That means it is not going to alert you, say for instance, when it's been filled with lime scale and needs help. Now, what is lime scale? Basically, calcium and other minerals inside your water at home, which are safe to drink, but could otherwise have deleterious effects on your appliances, for instance, can build up on the inside of the classic. Now, things like if you see buildup, say, on your shower head or maybe on your faucets at home, all of that kind of buildup can build up in the classic. And so that scale can impair the ability of the boiler to heat water, and they can also block passageways that water flows through inside the machine. Now, there are really two options that you can use to counteract this sort of effect. The first is to regularly descale the machine using a acidic solution like Gaja's decalcifying solution that breaks down those acids. But if, say for instance, you sort of want a twofold benefit in terms of getting better tasting water and also getting scale protection, that's where water filtration options come into play. Now, I have an assortment from a brand called BWT, and in particular, each of these products improves water taste, but also is designed to remove minerals that cause scale buildup. So whenever you're choosing a filter for your classic, you really wanna learn about what the filter is removing from the water and if it's actually softening it. So with a couple of options here, the first is a pouch style filter. Now, this is the most low tech and basic. It sits in the tank and softens the water gradually. It's a process that takes about eight to 10 hours. So ideally you would leave it in the tank overnight and then your water would be ready for you to brew with in the morning. This is a cheap and easy option and something that you'd replace on approximately a two month basis. Now, the next type of filter is actually plumbed into the line of the machine. So as I showed you, the Classic has a water intake. Now that intake fits onto this intake here for the filter. And what happens is the water is pulled up through multiple layers of filtration inside this cartridge so that it's actually filtered and prepared to be brewed with by the time it reaches the boiler. So the advantage there is that anytime that you add new water to your machine, it can be filtered instantaneously to brew. So our last option comes in the form of a water pitcher. So BWT uses magnesium cartridges that also soften the water for their pitchers. Now, you would again really need to check, is my drinking water pitcher at home filtering for scale? And if it is, then that's something that you could probably use with your classic. But if it's not, and it's only filtering for taste, then you would still want to be descaling. Any of these products here are softening water and improving the quality of taste. And so it comes down to really your budget and your lifestyle as to which one you would want to use with your machine. But let's take a look at how we would attach the best cup filter here to the wa uh, water inlet. Now let's take a look at installing a inline water filter in the Gaja Classic. So that's gonna involve taking your water adapter and then connecting that to your water inlet. Now you do need to just be able to identify which of these two ends to connect the inlet to. In the case of the best cup adapter from BWT, it's going to be this one that's angling outward. 
The water inlet is the longer of the two tubes that hangs in the reservoir, and it has the sort of forked tongue end on here. So simply go ahead and secure that onto the intake from the filter. And now, basically, what we want to do is, if you can see here, this tube has a tendency to sort of angle down and to the left. What we'll want is to simply secure the adapter into the reservoir. And now, there are a couple of things that we want to take note of. One is that we want this to be pretty far down in the actual tank because that's going to let it draw more water, but also that we have enough room for the cartridge which we're going to install. But so by simply pressing, that suction cup is a good one and it's really not going to go anywhere. So we've got that and we'll go ahead now and insert the cartridge. So you can see, and now simply we'll go right on ahead, we'll take our water return line, and then simply slide things back. Now we have this set up and we can actually fill the tank with water and we've got it set so that we can have that water drawn through the filter before it reaches the boiler. So with water in the reservoir, it's ready to start flipping some of these switches. I am going to be getting more in depth over what each of these switches and lights mean in just a bit, but it's important to note that this power switch here when flipped to the on position is going to begin sending power to the heating element. That's heating your boiler and if there is no water in that boiler, well, that can cause it to burn out the element and damage the machine. But once we're done priming, we'll have filled the boiler with water and you won't have to worry about that. But for the first use, we will need to go ahead and turn this switch on and then we will open this valve. After that, you'll simply flip the brew switch to activate the pump. This will draw water in through the pump and prime the machine. Now, it may take a little bit longer on a very brand new machine versus this one that I've been using for a bit here, but this process is identical for anyone. So we'll go ahead actually, and I'll have the valve open first. We'll switch the power light on and the brew switch. And once you have a solid stream of water flowing through the steam wand, that means that not only has the machine been properly primed, but the boiler is also full of water and is not going to be at risk of burning out. So we can go ahead and flip that switch back, close our steam valve, and now your classic pro is ready to brew.